Anzac spirit isn't the glory of the battle, but the endurance, courage, ingenuity, good humour and camaraderie from, from the times of extreme hardship. Anzac spirit cannot be recreated for a movie, book series or even a play. When our last Anzac, Alex Campbell, died in April of 2012, the men that fought in Anzac Cove passed on, but the spirit they embody and their hard work lives on. If you go through the Australian War Memorial or any Anzac shrine, you can still see the emotional effects the war still has on us today. Though Australians no longer have the men who forged the Anzac spirit legend, we will always keep those soldiers in our hearts from generation to generation. Today, we still thank and remember them for what they did to protect our countries and our freedom. We still pay our respects for them on the 25th of April and 11th of November. We admire them because against all the odds, they maintain some type of humour within the trenches of death and they were still determined to keep our freedom. During the early years of the war, a lot of countries used propaganda to make the general population believe the Great War was a glorious cause that would bring them and their country pride. In Australia, the government told men to help protect the mother country, talking about England needing soldiers to stop the enemy reaching London. If you weren't fighting, you were seen as cowardly. Women in Port Pirie in South Australia gave white feathers to the young fellows they considered too cowardly to enlist to shame them. The effects of this propaganda were wide-reaching. Many kids wanted to gain the honour of fighting the war, even if it involved forcing their parents to sign the agreement illegally allowing them to join the army. James Charles Martin was a 14-year-old boy from the small country town of Tukumwile, New South Wales. Just after leaving school to work as a farmhand, James decided to join the Australian army. James threatened to run away and join under a different name if his parents did not agree to sign. James wanted to go on an adventure to see the world in a different light, not as from a small country town, and to experience new things, just as kids today today want to travel and have our own adventures. James left Melbourne, bound for Egypt in June of 1915, and trained for three months in Cairo. On completion of his training, he was shipped to Gallipoli. James was the youngest soldier to die and be buried in Anzac Cove. His final resting place lies facing the now soothing ways of Anzac Cove. What were you doing at 14? Now imagine James's thoughts, feelings, as he looked at the beaches and high cliffs of Turkey. Did he understand that so many would die during the course of the war? That he and thousands would take their last breaths? It is most likely that you and I were attending school to get an education, having fun with friends and enjoying life. James was on the farm, digging, planting cabbages, ploughing paddocks. This is a 14-year-old Australian lad finding and dying in one of the bloodiest wars in recent history. By the time he stood on the shore of Anzac Cove, looking out upon the open battlefield, eyes wide with terror, he could feel the cold wind blowing in his face, and the sound of the wind were replaced by gunshots and death. Imagine having no one but strangers to comfort you while you took your last breath, something no child could suffer through. James' final moments are ones of crawling through brown slush, remembering the people back home. His mother, father, sister, friends, and longing for cover from the pain and terror. We all have our reasons of ways of celebrating Anzac Day, but Australians agree that the message of our Anzac heritage must be passed on to the youth of today. We must remember our Anzac history as something we should not be reliving within our lifetimes. We are thankful for the courage of people like James who fought and died for our freedom. The word Anzac is something we all know. It represents us as fighters, to never give up as people. But there must be something inside the meaning of Anzac, something we don't see. The men who died on the battlefield, the men that lost an arm or a leg, or lost their best mate or their brother, or just a finger, they knew that keeping their chin up would lift the moral of the people around them. When someone lay dying, mates helped them, knowing that, while so far from home, there were still people by their side that cared. James had someone there, helping him through his final moments. It's just one story told of thousands. Hundred years on, we now stop on the 25th of April to remember and salute the people that died for our freedom and for our rights. We want the generations to come to remember and to consider how our lives might be if it wasn't for the Anzacs and all Australian soldiers who had fought in the wars since that, the war to end all war.